first video, I want to go over some temperature equilibrium problems that involve the Chatelier's principle. In a previous video, I explained some of the theory behind temperature equilibrium problems using Le Chatelier's principle, and I also went into depth of how to use a trick that I've developed to solve these types of problems. But in this video, I'm just going to go over some uh, a couple of numerical problems that involve Le Chatelier's principle for temperature problems using that trick. So please refer to that video if you want to see an in-depth explanation of how I do these problems. In this first problem, we are given an equilibrium with, with the standard enthalpy of reaction as a separate value, and we're asked to determine in which direction the equilibrium will shift if the system is warmed or if the system is cooled. So we can rewrite this equilibrium as such. We know that this reaction is endothermic. So because it's endothermic, energy can be considered a reactant because the system gains And now I write in the equilibrium arrows. You can see that I left them absent. So now I'm going to write them in. And I write the bottom arrow such that it's pointing in the direction of the energy term, in this case, to the left. And therefore, the top arrow will point to the right. And now I color the bottom arrow blue. and I color the top arrow red. And now to answer the question, if the system is heated, well if the system is heated, I draw a red arrow pointing in the direction of the energy term. It's pointing towards the energy term. And you can think of this as meaning that we're adding in more warmth to the energy. We're adding in more warmth. And now I refer back to the equilibrium arrows. And in whichever direction the red equilibrium arrow is pointing is the direction that the equilibrium will shift if the system is heated. So therefore, if this system, if this equilibrium is heated, this the equilibrium will shift to the right. Now if this equilibrium is cooled, I draw a blue arrow pointing away from the energy term. And you can think of this as representing cold, removing energy from the system. And we refer back to our equilibrium arrows and, which, and in whichever direction this blue equilibrium arrow is pointing is the direction that the equilibrium will shift if it's cooled. So the blue arrow is pointing to the left, and therefore we can say that the equilibrium will shift to the left if it's cooled. Now let's look at another problem. In this case, we're given in equilibrium, and we have a standard enthalpy of reaction term that is less than zero. So this this is an e this is an an exothermic process. So we can rewrite this equilibrium, and what I've done is I've assigned a random numerical value to this enthalpy term just to just to help visualize it better and of course the energy term is a product because the system loses heat and we draw in the equilibrium arrows 
such that the bottom one, in this case, points to the right in the direction of the energy term, and then the top one will point to the left. The color of the bottom arrow blue, and the top arrow red. So if the system is heated, draw a red arrow into the energy term, and then we refer back to our equilibrium arrows. The red equilibrium arrow is pointing to the left, so therefore we can say that if this, if this equilibrium is heated, equilibrium will shift to the left. But if this equilibrium is cooled, we can draw a blue arrow out of the energy term. And, this and then we refer back to the equilibrium arrows. And this blue equilibrium arrow is pointing to the right. So therefore, we can say that if this equilibrium is cooled, the equilibrium will shift to the right. So th those are all the problems that I'm going to go over right now. And I basically covered four main problems. So you'll either, either be given an exothermic or an endothermic equilibrium, and then asked to determine how the equilibrium will shift if it is heated or cool. And of course, in order to use this trick, you need you essentially need two pieces of numerical information. You need the balanced chemical equilibrium and the standard enthalpy of react or just the react um, an enthalpy of reaction value. And once you have all of that, you can use this trick, and then you should be able to solve these problems without any problem.